All right, so whether you are just starting out or you're a seasoned tax sale investor, there have been some shifts in the tax sale business over the last year and over the last few years. And if you're not keeping up with it, you can miss out on some incredible opportunities. So stick around. This episode is going to be packed with value. Before we get started, my name is Casey Denman. I've been investing in tax liens and tax deeds for well over two decades, and I've been training others for more than a dozen years through my videos, books, and the comprehensive training platform that I operate at TaxSellAcademy.com. Come. All right, let's talk about the future of tax sale investing and some trends that you might want to pay attention to. First one and the most obvious one is going to be the transition to online tax sales. It's going to be the biggest change over the last few years, especially since 2020. The transition to online tax sales is here and it is here to stay. Now, before you had to physically go to the county courthouse, bid in person, or maybe even mail in your bids. But today, more counties than ever have moved their tax sales online. According to recent data, 60 to 70% of tax sales are now happening online. And that number is only going to rise. More counties are realizing the benefits of reaching a broader audience, making the process much more efficient and cheaper for their staffs, and it's easier to operate. Now, for us investors, this shift really opens up a lot of opportunities all over the country. You don't have to be limited to your local market anymore, and you might not need to travel to auctions. You can participate in tax sales in different states without ever leaving your home. You can do this while you're on vacation, while you're traveling overseas, while you're on a cruise ship, while you're on an airplane, you can invest from anywhere that you want utilizing online tax sales. This is especially helpful if you're in some of the states where there are less frequent auctions or it's a more competitive state. Just go online and you have access to hundreds and hundreds of auctions at your fingertips. Now, if you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out some of the major tax sale platforms like Bid for Assets, Real Auction, and GovEase. They allow you to quickly scan through the properties, filter by state, and you start bidding right away. Now, with all of this said, here's the kicker. There's going to be more competition out there. So it's going to become even more of a numbers game. So you need to know how to operate efficiently. And by the way, if you do happen to invest in a county that has not transitioned online yet, that's still pretty good news because even though it might not be convenient to you, the requirement to show up in person will cut down the competition tremendously. So there's perks to both online and in-person auctions. All right, let's move on. Research now is easier than it ever has been before. One of the hardest parts about tax sale investing used to be finding the right information about the properties you are researching. I was actually talking to a friend yesterday about the time when I first got into this business in the early 2000s. I remember a salesperson was selling me this software and it was just phenomenal at the time. I actually went to his office and he had developed this revolutionary system where you could just click on a map, zoom into a parcel, it would tell you who owned that property. It would tell you all the information about this property. I didn't realize it at the time, but all he was doing is using some new API type data that he brought in from other sources to create essentially a GIS system, which we now have available on our cell phones. You know, you used to have to really, really dig for the information that you needed through public records. You had to hire title companies to make sure the property didn't have any liabilities that you didn't know about when it comes to title issues. It's a very time consuming and a bit overwhelming, especially for new investors. But times have changed. We can do just about all that through our phones nowadays. Researching properties is easier than it has ever been. Thanks to the internet, you can access almost all the records that you need with just a few clicks. There's lots of websites out there, lots of apps that we can go to find valuable information when it comes to values, comps, neighborhood trends, the property specifics like the size, the condition, your built, all that good stuff. We can also use the internet to look up any liens on the property that might stay, like governmental liens. We can look up the ownership history. We can also even look up environmental issues all from your laptop or your smartphone. Even better, counties are starting to provide more data directly to the bidders. A lot of tax sale sites are providing detailed property reports or links to those detailed property reports, and they might even include descriptions from the past 
60 or 90 days when they did a site visit to the property and a lot of other helpful information helping you to make more informed decisions. Now, obviously, any information that people provide to you, you need to be able to independently verify yourself. There's a lot of very, very sad stories out there where a person thought they were buying a house when they were actually buying the five-foot strip of land next to that house because they didn't know what they were doing. The difference maker here between the successful and the unsuccessful in this business, now that we have all this data at our fingertips, is knowing how to use these tools and how to decipher the information. A lot of people think that just because they have an app on their phone where they can figure out who owns the property next door, they are suddenly a real estate investor and they know everything possible about the property utilizing their app. That is not the truth. Real estate investing is not a science. Even though we have these tools, you need to be able to decipher when something is a good investment and when it is not. And that is much more of an art that you must learn through formal training or develop over years and years of experience. So while the tools are out there, it does not make this business foolproof until you know how to utilize them. Next one. We're able to maximize our profits now through internet marketing. This is something I've been using for 15 years or so in some form. It's something that has become easier and easier for newbies to learn. And that is going to be the value of internet marketing. We all know that the key to a successful tax investment is not just finding a great deal, but maximizing your profits and increasing efficiency in your deals is going to be just as important. And in today's world, the internet allows us to do that much better and much faster than ever. So when you acquire a property, the goal is going to be to sell it fast, that we can roll over your money, right? Uh, there's a saying, everybody will make a million dollars in their lifetime. The trick is to shorten that to where you're making a million dollars in a year or two. If you don't have to rely on a realtor anymore to get the word out, if you don't have to rely on open houses, signs, or any of that other stuff that we did back in the early 2000s, it makes that process much, much faster if you're able to leverage and take advantage of internet marketing. You know, we have platforms like Zillow, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, a lot of forums that you can market your properties on directly to buyers. And this is especially useful when you're dealing with rural properties or vacant lots, things that may not have moved as quickly through your traditional channels. You know, a well-placed Facebook ad or a targeted email campaign can connect you with motivated buyers all over the world. And let's not forget about the power of email list and buyers list that you can assemble through your internet marketing efforts. This is a strategy that I've used forever now and something that I teach in depth inside the Tax Cell Academy. When done correctly, you can literally have a buyer lined up and possibly even a deposit in your account within minutes of winning a property at an auction. The future of tax cell investing is going to be in the hands of those who are able to leverage the internet to not only find the deals, but also be able to sell them much faster and operate much more efficiently. Now let's talk about some legal changes when it comes to the tax sale of business. A lot of the changes we've talked about so far allow us to operate more efficiently and basically allow us to make more money in this business. However, there are some legal changes on the horizon that we need to look out for that will require us to change our strategies moving forward. And truthfully, I don't think it's really going to affect those who are able to pivot just a little bit. If you've been following the tax sell laws at all, you've probably heard about the Tyler versus Hennepin County case. It could have an impact on the way tax sell investing works in the future. So in short, the case revolves around homeowners who lose their properties to tax foreclosure but the county collects more from the sale of that property than what was owed. So there's a surplus there. In that specific state, that surplus was kept by the state. So the homeowner in that case argued the county was guilty of excessive taking, and the Supreme Court agreed. They ruled in her favor. Now, that ruling has changed the way some areas operate their tax lien and their tax deed sales in a number of different states outside of just Minnesota, which is where that case was based. You know, that's not the only one that has gone through the system. Wayside Church versus Van Buren County is another one dealing with surplus funds in the state of Michigan. Now, we all know how long it takes the government to act. In some states right now, we still have state laws that are contrary to the Supreme Court ruling. Now, my personal opinion, those surplus funds need to go back to the person that lost that property after 
all lien holders are paid off. If there's anything left over, they should get their equity back and they should get 100% of that equity back. The county should be responsible for getting it to them. What's gonna happen, however, is a lot of states, whether they are directly impacted by that law or not, they're gonna start working and tweaking their laws. But again, the government takes forever to do stuff. Eventually, we're gonna see a lot of changes. However, I believe this change will ultimately lead to more transparency in the system, which is a good thing for everyone. And the investors who are able to adjust the fastest, they're gonna reap some large, large rewards. So pay attention to these laws, pay attention to these bills working their way through the various court systems to see their status and how you can leverage them the moment that they are enacted. And finally, I want to end on this note. There's never been a better time to get involved in the tax sale business. All of these trends, online auctions, easier research, uh, internet marketing, industry changes, they're opening the doors for investors who are willing to put in the work. The barriers to entry have never been lower. You don't need a ton of money to get started and you don't need to be a real estate expert. With just a few thousand dollars or even less, you can start building a tax sale business today. And with all the resources available online, you've got everything that you need to succeed. Now, the one caveat to this, you cannot go into this business blindly. You must take the time to learn what you are doing. Put in the work up front, put in the effort up front and enjoy, reap those benefits for decades to come. Take advantage of the opportunities in front of you. That's all I've got for you today on this episode. Hey, if this episode helped you at all, please do me a huge favor and leave us a positive feedback rating. Click that thumbs up button or a five-star review on whatever podcast or video platform you're listening to us on today. As always, I encourage you to stay informed of the laws that affect you, your business, your income, and ultimately your family. The industry is constantly evolving and those who adapt are going to be the ones who reap the rewards. For more information on this incredible business, make sure you check out TaxSellAcademy.com, where I operate our comprehensive tax sell training platform. We'll see you next time right here on the Tax Sell Podcast. Make it a successful day. Bye-bye.